What's up guys, welcome back to Athlete Culture. My name is Jay, I'm the head trainer here, and today I have another guest with me, his name is Ben. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and give us a little bit of a bio. Yeah, uh, happy to be here. So, my name's Ben. Um, I got into lifting uh, basically because of basketball, and I really started off with plyometrics, um, and then that, that kind of grew into more powerlifting and, and some bodybuilding here and there. Um, I'm a junior at IC, study finance and marketing, so I don't have any, you know, exercise science major as as some of the guys on here have but uh you know passionate about lifting and it's, it's something i have to do and i mean that's the thing as soon as you get a passion for it like i fell in love with it after the first time i lifted it's just like that it's that type of sport where if you do it once you're gonna fall in love with that type of thing and i think i think it's one of those things that has a ripple effect so like you know lifting obviously it's great you stay healthy but for me it also it structures my day you know so it's instead of taking a break from homework to watch Netflix for an hour, you know, I'll go crush a couple hour lift, you know, be feeling great. It, it raises your mood and you're, you're ready to get back after it. So I think in that sense, it's really, it's really helped me um, throughout. Yeah. That's actually a really good point. Cause I feel like a lot of people, especially some of my friend group, they sit on, or even like people I know around campus, they'll be like, Oh, I have nothing to do. I'm just probably going to watch Netflix. Me. I have this certain block right after wherever I'm free and be like, okay, gym time. Well, yeah, and it's that, and, and it's self confidence too. You know, whatever people want to say, you feel better about yourself when you're lifting. You know, you're looking better, you're feeling better. It's, I, I think, it helps you in, in all kinds of aspects of your life. For sure, definitely. I like that confidence point of it because I mean, you saw me. I've you've seen me from the beginning to now, and I'm just I'm so much more confident. I pose in the mirror almost. 30 yeah, minutes you, a day. you feel great about yourself. It's Literally. awesome. That's I really I encourage it to everyone. You know, it doesn't really matter. You know, you don't have to be trying to set the squat world record, but just get in there, you know, do some, do some stuff. And it, it I, you know, for me too, it's, it's given me all sorts of opportunities. Um, actually my internship this summer was with this company called F45. Um, and it's basically, it's a fitness studio that incorporates, you know, circuit training, hit training and functional training. Um, and they're 45 minute workouts. But, but what happened was, my, uh, one of my best friends, um, he coached me in basketball. His name is Brent McKenna. He graduated Ithaca in uh, 2012, actually, funnily enough. Um, worked in corporate, was super successful with that, but then decided, you know what, this isn't my pet, you know, this isn't my passion. What I really love is I love fitness and, and that sort of thing and helping others achieve their goals. So basically, he kind of rose through the ranks, became GM of F45 Hampshire Meadows in Hadley, Massachusetts. Um, and then last summer he said, Hey, I, you know, I need someone who's going to help with the business aspect, sales aspect of things, um, as an intern. And he's like, Benny, you want, you want, the, you want the job. And so, you know, I think the fact that I lifted with him throughout and developed that relationship through lifting, um, and, and fitness gave me that opportunity. And I had a great summer, made some great connections. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's just an awesome thing that I think everyone really should, should do. Yeah. And I look two points that you just touched on in there were the relationships and the connections, if you, you have to reach out to people. And like I've said before, the knowledge aspect, but if you reach out to these guys, like I met you through Seamus. Yeah. I met a lot of guys through everybody that I know. I met Seamus through Jake. I've met David through Jake, Dan through Jake, Chris through yeah. my major, everything you learn. If you get those connections, people are going to know you. And, and one thing about lifting is even though lifting is, you know, you could, you could say it's an ego heavy sport, you know, you, you got guys always looking in the mirror, this, that, and the other thing. I think you have to be able to to accept the fact that you always can learn from people. Um, so for me, like Seamus is younger than I am, but but Seamus has taught me, you know, tons about lifting because I've just you know accepted he knows way more about it than I do, um, and and he's somebody I can really learn from. That's been you know the case with Jake and Chris. Too. Yeah, they've all oh, yeah, all helped sure. me, and, and you know tons of people not to mention in in before I got got to school here. Yeah, exactly. I feel like there's definitely that aspect of a lot of times people are like, oh, but you're younger than me. There's no way you know more than me. But it's, yeah. <laughs> I know a lot of these guys that know more than a lot of the guys that I know that are older than them. Absolutely. And even my co my cousin, he's in the military. He's, oh, I think cool. he's in his 30s. Yeah, he's in his 30s. <laughs> he, uh, he'll he come to me sometimes with questions about lifting. Or even, exactly, yeah. even Jake sometimes will come to me about with some questions or it's just cool to bounce things off of each other and ask and like make those connections and build those relationships with everyone. Exactly. And different things work for different people. So just getting more opinions is always, always a bonus. You know, it's, it's great. Yeah, for sure. Now, 
on the aspect of like, I know you said you got into lifting because of basketball. Was there a deeper lying motivation behind getting into like powerlifting um, per se? That's a good question. So I would say one one key thing about me getting into lifting was I had not Brennan. He coached me in uh, basketball, but my baseball coach, uh, his name was Skinny Williams. Um, still one of my best friends, but he, uh, he was one of those guys who, you know, he would stay after practice. He'd always be, you know, hounding, hounding us. Hey man, you know, he was, he was like probably six or seven years older than us. Um, get in the weight room, you know, develop that work ethic. And so, you know, after school, when I wasn't, you know, it wasn't in season, I'd go and I'd lift with him. And, and that really kind of developed my, I guess, my passion for lifting. Um, and then I think, relationships that I've kind of built through lifting um, have kind of been that deeper passion. So two of my best friends from home, uh, Seth and Cade Gawanter, they're, uh, they're actually twins. Um, and these kids are, they're freaks. They've been lifting since eighth grade. Jesus. Seth set the all time bench record at Frontier at my high school when he was in, I think he benched like 360 when he was a senior in high school. Jeez. Um, and then Cade, all, uh, equally fantastic at lifting. I saw him this summer, he squatted 500 for five. Just, Kate's the kind of guy who he'll he'll get drunk and then like have work boots on and pull 500 pounds like it's not you know he's a savage <laughs> so I think those guys um kind of being my best friends definitely you know help me develop that love for lifting you know um they they have a they have a cool thing at their their house it's we call it the barn but their dad's like just super clever guy and he built this like training facility I'll show you a picture of it after um, where it's like you, you got like 60, 100 feet of turf and then just a sweet gym. Um, and so being able to go up there, train with those guys, I think oh, yeah. all that kind of compounded into, into me sure. being real, real passionate about, about fitness and lifting. Yeah. And the cool thing about relationships, like it's not even the fact that, oh, you get knowledge, you have those connections. It's, it lets you build like a competitive spirit with everyone. Because I'm sure with those guys, those two, especially them being brothers and twins, they're probably the most competitive two against oh, each other yeah. all the time. You wouldn't believe it. They're always going at it. I mean, I know I might have talked to you about it, but my friend, he sent me a video. Jesse Young, he, uh, hopefully he listens to this. <laughs> but he, uh, he sent me a video. We were always competing in bench because our benches were always close. We were always yep. kind of close in weight. And he sent me a video not too long ago after his bulk that he hit or he hit 225 with no pause or anything and i had done it before so he was kind of trying to catch up right and i was like i had just finished my cut was getting into my bulk and i was like all right time to hit 225 with a pause <laughs> show off a little bit it's awesome too because it's like it's it's a really healthy kind of competitive you know it's like your buddies but it's like hey man I'm, I'm gonna get a fucking better bench than you you know it's yeah so i think it's 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 a it's a really beneficial way for for those relationships to yeah. uh, to form yeah, people definitely, especially in this, that's what I love about these two industries, powerlifting and bodybuilding. Yeah, bodybuilding is a little different, but you're still, like Jake said, you step on stage, you look at these guys that might beat you, and you're like, I want to be better than them. It's a healthy competition to force you to be the best version of yourself that you possibly can be. Exactly, yeah, I agree with that. And then to answer your question earlier, which I don't think I really got around to, is um, in terms of specifically powerlifting, I think the reason I leaned towards that was after sports kind of kind of ended, I wanted something I could still be competitive in and, and have goals and, and strive for strive for new numbers. Um, so I think that contributed to it. I think the fact that Seth and Cade um, and, and now Seamus and Jake, obviously, um, are all powerlifters definitely contributed to it. Um, and I think I'm, I'm at an age where I can really try and push my body, um, mm -hmm. hopefully without without long-term repercussions. Um, for sure. And then, you know, maybe when I'm, you know, 20s 30s older 20s 30s I'll, I'll move towards like maybe more hit training or or something like that but but right now it just seems like the time to really get going going in the powerlifting as for sure i mean i see a lot of these guys and i just some of these guys are animals in this and yeah. especially here like we have such a good group of guys especially alone at this gym yeah absolutely in the fit it's so fun though because like we've said we there's so much banter especially you me and oh, Seamus. Yeah. No, like, it's, 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 it's like it's they, like Seamus said the other day when he was interviewing. Sometimes I got to avoid you because you, you will just fucking talk each other's ears off. You know? yeah. <laughs> I mean, you literally saw me on the staircase the other day. We talked each other's ear off for like 15 minutes. Yeah, it's I, I know sometimes like if, I, if I've only got a certain amount of time allotted for that lift, I got to stay away from Jason and Jim. It's just one of those things. You know, <laughs> Always have a lot of guys. It's funny. Yeah, for sure. Especially that's what I love about here, though. Like, I know you can probably agree with this. The environment is so good. It's awesome. These guys are so willing to help. Like I walked in first day ever walking into this gym. I was benching 
and I saw Chris benching. I introduced myself. I've known this guy since day one, pretty yeah. much here. And I've been, he's been helping me ever since, giving me knowledge. Sometimes I'll just sit there and listen to him. He won't even be talking to me. Like he'll be talking <laughs> to Dan, Seamus, Jake, any of those guys. I'll just sit there and listen just to hear what he has to say. It's it's awesome. Yeah. And 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 everyone, for the most part, some extent, but everyone's like, you know, willing to teach you and kind of give you their, their take on things and, you know, slap each other on the back when you, when you get a good lift. And it's a, it's a good environment. Yeah, sure. I really enjoy it. So speaking on powerlifting and like your goals and everything. So what is, are you going to ever compete? First of all? Yeah. So I do see myself competing at some point this, this past summer. Um, I was feeling pretty good about my lifts. Um, and I, I almost did, but it kind of, it fell through. Um, but I do see my, I don't see myself ever, you know, really getting into it. Like this isn't going to be my career. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think, I think competing is definitely something that I see myself and would like to do within probably the next three years. Nice. Um, at some point when I feel, feel real confident in my lifts. For sure. Um, speaking of your lifts, what are your current PRs or maxes, whatever you want to call them? Yeah. So current, current maxes right now, um, bench is right around 250. Squat is 375 and deadlift 405. Um, Jesus, our numbers are so close. I know, I know. <laughs> I want. I we haven't maxed in a while. I'd like like to get them up. Um, but you know, that's everyone says that. So yeah, I feel like that's a constant, especially in the sport. You're you're happy for like three seconds after you pull a PR, and you're like, all right, next goal. <laughs> but it is cool because uh, you know, after doing the Ithaca, it's like I I remember benching 205 was like a real a real struggle when I first got here. And now, like, I, you know, hit 185 for, like, 36 or 39 reps or something the other Jesus. day. Jesus. Very little rap. Yeah. So, it's 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 cool seeing seeing that progress more than anything else. I think it's, it's really, really what I like about it. It's so, sure. it's so clear, you know. It's not like, like, other sports you can kind of see it. Maybe basketball, like, if your points per game, I guess, goes up. But, like, but lifting, it's, like, so concrete. Like, I put this much weight, like, 40 pounds on my squat or whatever yeah. it is. And I think... That's really cool to have something so like, I guess like kind of tangible that you can, yeah. this is like, you know. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people like to go based off of that, like a lot of people will trash on the fact of, oh, you, you do social media, you're just trying to get attention type of stuff, especially with like physiques or like your numbers. But it's cool to see, like if you go back, what you've looked like when you were doing this type of lift at this day and then like years or two in the future look back and they're like wow that's what i look like now that's what my lift is i've put so much on it uh, and you know it's funny you bring that up um the social media point i just started a, a lifting page um and it's yeah it's really for that reason so i can track and kind of hold myself accountable um to always be making progress and be able to see that progress nice i'll have to give that a follow yeah please done low fitness all righty yeah you heard it guys ben low fitness go, go <laughs> follow him but no, so with your maxes and stuff, what are your splits? Do you have Seamus making those? Yeah, so I, I lift with Seamus. He does all my programming, you know, all credit to him for that. So Mondays we do max effort upper, um, Tuesdays are dynamic lower, Thursdays dynamic um, upper, Fridays max lower, and then Saturdays we'll crush arms and, and shoulders. He didn't even come in today. <laughs> I know, yeah, we big deload week, so I think we took took today off. I was you, gonna say usually we'd be be blowing up the biceps today. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Yeah, I had squats today. I hit three twenty five for the first time. I saw the video of that those looked really solid. Yeah, I haven't touched. It's funny because the last time I squatted over three fifteen was in October, and I weighed two hundred at that point, and I was like. I just hit that and I went 174 <laughs> and it was 10 times better form. That's awesome. Yeah. It's it, again, seeing that progress is, it's such a nice feeling. Yeah. Especially just because I have the weight loss plus yeah. the channel. So I'm able to look back and I'm like, wow, I did that, that at that weight. And now I'm doing it at this weight. So cool. And it's so much easier. Do you think you got a 405 squat in the tank sometime soon? soon maybe <laughs> deadlift is definitely a lot closer of a bet because yeah. i just hit 345 for a double yeah almost so a triple the other day that's coming up and i have 355 tomorrow for a double my bench oh. pr most likely coming up pretty soon i just i have 235 tomorrow for a pause single yep yeah that'll be i don't know solid. if you saw the video the 225 pause bench that i did 
Did you see that six second pause I had to do at the beginning? <laughs> I don't think I, no, I didn't see that. It was, it was a real long pause on it. Well, see what happened is I told the spotter beforehand was don't touch the bar unless it's on my chest. Oh, and I'm I did help. see that. You know, I said that to Seamus. I said, this kid should never be allowed to spot again. Yeah. That was, that he was literally was... followed the bar down. I look up at him and I go, move your hands. Yeah. No, I could, I honestly couldn't believe that video. I was, what, what, what is this kid doing? Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> in my head, I'm thinking, if he screws this lift up for me and I have to redo this set and I don't have the energy to get the number that I want, I'm going to be very pissed off. <laughs> but I got it. And I'm like, 235 is going to be an easy tank. Because that was <laughs> yeah. a six-second pause plus another two reps. You know, it's it's funny because you got to – picking a spotter is like you got to really know who you're going. So one day I, I was going for a bench max, and for whatever reason, I think Seamus had already lifted that day and, and Rob, the other guy we lifted with, wasn't there. And so I went with a – it was a kid who I'd never never spotted, but he's, you know, a strong kid. seen him in the gym a lot, and I was, you know, could you, could you spot me? I'm going for 260, 10-pound PR. And he's like, yeah, of course. And it was one of those, I mean, we really didn't mean, he didn't mean to mess it up, but, but I get it up and it's up and it's up and it's going slow, but it's one of those where, you know, it's going really slow, but you know, you're going to get it. Yeah. And it's, it's like three quarters of the way up and he grabs it. And I was, oh. I was hard. And then I tried it two more times and couldn't get it. So that's a heartbreak. It was, it was pretty devastating, but you know what? Who cares about 260? I'm just, just going to hit 275 next time, you know? For sure. <laughs> yeah. I definitely feel like my bench, my bench and my dad are definitely my strongest right now. But no, how, why I said our maxes are so close. My bench is 250, my squat's 375, and my oh, dad's no 385. Yeah, we're like right, right neck and neck here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's awesome. That's the fun part, though. Now that I know those, your numbers versus mine, I'm definitely going to. Oh, this is motivation. Your, oh, yeah. This 100%. is motivation for sure. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to pass you real quick. I'm going to, I'll meet Seamus up there eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another year. <laughs> Always chasing those guys. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm only. I still got three weeks left in my bulk before I'm at max calories. Yeah, so that's a lot, lot more, lot more to come. Speaking of that, that actually is one of the questions. How many calories do you eat a day, and what does your meal plan look like? Yeah, so I'm one of those guys. I've always, I was always like a real skinny, skinny little guy in high school. You know, I, was, I think I was like 145 like my junior year, um, and I never really got the hang of gaining weight until I just said, you know what, I'm gonna eat as much as I can of everything that I can. And finally, I, uh, over the past like year or two, I've, I've gotten up to like, I'm thinking I'm like 191 now. Um, and so I'm kind of moving away from, like I, I, I've, I've done the math out. I know that I sit like, my maintenance is like right around 3000. Okay. Um, so I kind of, I don't track it as strictly as I should, but I, I try and always be in excess of that. Mm -hmm. um, and as clean as possible. Yeah. Um, but you know, you know the college lifestyle, it's, it's not always that easy. <laughs> Powdered eggs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, so so I guess I've tracked my macros in the past, and I think I'll probably do it this summer again when I, you know, it's it's hard to dine at all. Yeah, um, for sure. But I think when I'm able to like cook for myself this summer, I'll I'll, I'll really dial that in more, um, yeah. especially as I get kind of like hopefully sitting like 195, 196, then maybe cut back down to like 185 somewhere in there, um, and I think that'll be a, a good a good balance. Talk to me after this. I can maybe set you up with some fit or some nutrition stuff. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Any, yeah, anything. Please I know, let me know. I know you got Seamus with the plan, but I can help with the uh, nutrition some stuff with that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Always looking for for what's like we talk about. It's always more ideas, the exactly. more the better. <laughs> but no, I gotta get you before Jake steals you. <laughs> He's stealing everybody. <laughs> he literally is stealing everybody. Is he? Yeah, he. Uh, Alex, one of the guys that Jake just picked up. He's one of my buddies, and he he was in the middle of a plan. He didn't really like how his sessions were going, so he had Jake make him a plan. I didn't know it. I was like, oh, if you need a plan, let me know. And he goes, ah, we got Jake. And I was like, dang uh, it. <laughs> beat me to it, Jake. He's a, he's a salesman. Yeah. I mean, I beat him to this. Yeah. He's yeah. making one of these now, too. So Is he? Yeah, he's making <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, speaking of nutrition, also... What is your opinion on fasting? Do you like intermittent fasting, long term fasts? See, fasting it's interesting. That's not really something I've ever, I've ever tried myself, mm -hmm. or at least consciously tried. Um, but one one thing I think Seamus was the one who said this, and it kind of I guess if you if you want my take on it with really very little experience with it, um, I think I think what matters most is what you break the fast with, and not necessarily how long it is. So I think if you can break it with like a really good like meal of, you know, chicken and rice and, and some vegetables, I think that's, that's going to be a lot more beneficial than obviously if you would 
hammer a pint of Ben and Jerry's or something, oh God. you know, which we've all been there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so I, I guess that's really my only, my only two cents on that. I mean, one, two things that you've said is finish your, or geez, I can't talk today, <laughs> is make sure you're bulking, when you're bulking, because I know you said you were bulking or trying to, um, keep it clean. I see so many guys and they're bulking. They're like, oh, I'm just going to shove everything I have in my face. <laughs> and that was my problem when I first got here. I gained 13 pounds in the first month we were here. Yeah, I mean, that's impressive. <laughs> Literally. No, but I get it. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's tough. It's a new, new lifestyle. You know, you're not yeah. used to the dining halls. And, and, you know, you'll eat, you'll eat whatever. <laughs> yeah, my diet was terrible. Three glasses of chocolate milk a day. Had a half a gallon <laughs> They get you with the chocolate room. milk. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's tough to say Burgers, no to that. fries, pizza. Literally. I was like, and I got that day and I was just like, all right, time to change. <laughs> and at that point I was vegetarian actually. Oh really? I turned vegetarian like beginning of September, like within the first few days of September. But I couldn't wow. find – I wasn't thinking right and I wasn't finding the right ways to get my protein. Yeah. So I was eating four – I did the math. I was eating like 12 to 14 tablespoons of peanut butter. Holy shit. That's so much fat. <laughs> so much. Yeah, that's – So many crazy. calories. Like a tablespoon is 94 calories. So <laughs> almost a, almost like 1,200 <laughs> calories, 1,400 calories yeah. just in peanut butter alone. No, that's – I mean that's, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. So – I, mean, I will say though, um, just one, 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 one caveat to that, that I would, I would say, at least in my, um, my situation was I did need to, to eat pretty dirty to get over the hump and start gaining weight. But I think yeah. once you kind of figure it out and figure out how many calories your body needs, that's when you key in and it's different for everyone. You yeah. know, um, I think I was just one of those people who really, really struggled with it. Um, yeah. And I mean, there is those guys, like I know Jake and I have talked about it, those hard gainer type of guys you need to start them a little dirtier than exactly. they want yeah. to be. But as soon as they start to – they show that and they get into a calorie surplus, then you start dialing it back making sure it's all clean. And the only problem with clean food is it takes so much of it to get calories. Yeah. No, it's, and that's uh, that's the, the big – I think for me anyway, that was the toughest thing is like just being able to eat that much, you know. Like sometimes I'll see Seamus sit down with like six just plain chicken breasts. Yep. And you know how the chicken breasts are here. I don't know. These are, uh -huh. They suck. <laughs> you yeah. know, they're dry, dry, dry as hell. I do that um, at terraces sometimes because I have those chicken breasts. I'll be like, oh, can I just get five of those? Yeah. Two ounces a piece, scarf 10 ounces of chicken, it's and it's tough. dry. Yeah, it's horrible. Um, but that's, you know, that's what it takes, and that's why. Yeah. I do it at breakfast too. I'll come, I'll eat one plate, I'll go back up, and they're like, oh, you're back for more. And I'm like, you know, <laughs> I don't want to be here. <laughs> I don't want to be here. Go to wake up full, go to sleep full. Yep. <laughs> it's terrible. It's horrible. Yeah. But hey, I mean, bulking is bulking, and I love it. Don't get me wrong. I oh yeah, being, I love being able to eat food. Like well, I, when I was cutting, you know, I was not eating food. <laughs> yeah. Well, you'd say it's part of the sport. You know, you can't work a bad diet, and that's just you got to embrace it. I love that phrase. Can't that work. Is yeah, one of my favorite phrases. That's a good one. I'm not going to take credit for for creating it, but it's, it's a good one. <laughs> hey, I mean. I'm sure we've all said phrases that we've never – we didn't create them, but we've heard them and they stuck with us for a really long Absolutely. time. But no. So I guess this is really the point where I ask the question everyone's waiting. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you if you're natural because I'm almost 100% positive that you are. Yeah. If you're not positive, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah. No, I mean you got that right. <laughs> but what is – speaking on that, what is your opinion on anabolics and PEDs? Yeah, so I think the cool thing about lifting versus other sports is it's one of those things where, where guys can take PEDs and it's still fair. So so in baseball, if there's a guy taking steroids, it's it's not fair because nobody else is and, and it's not an even playing field. But lifting, you know, you can you can have guys who are, are clean and guys who aren't. And I think that that's, that's pretty cool. And it, and it allows you to push, push the boundaries, um, I guess, of what the human body is capable of. It's not, not something I'll ever do, you know. I think that for what why I why I why I lift, um, it just doesn't really make sense for me. And I think that some you know, it's not the healthy, healthiest thing in the world for you. Um, I think that's just that's just a fact. Um, but you know, for guys who this is their life and that's their goal is to be, you know, one of the strongest people in the world, you know, you have to do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it has its place. I like that. That's like, I know David said something about, like, yeah, it has their own lanes and he's kind of against it. Jake, 100% for him. Yeah, no, I've heard him talk about it. <laughs> and then you got Seamus who 
kind of like you saying stay in your own lane and stuff like that and i that's what i like you said something around the same thing but you didn't say the same thing and that's cool because i feel like a lot of people get like the same opinion especially if they're there there for it they're like oh stay in your lanes if you have it you have it compete in a federation where you should be in or compete in a federation if you don't want to compete against those types of guys. Yeah. And then you have those guys that are like, oh, it's terrible. You shouldn't do it, blah, blah, blah. And most of those guys are the guys that come from other sports. <laughs> that's, Literally. That's true. I know a guy, he, uh, he was a baseball player. And we were talking about lifting one day. And he goes, oh, that's stupid, blah, blah, blah. You shouldn't be able to do that kind of stuff. I'm like, why? What sport are you? And he goes, baseball. Okay. I go, well, that's why. <laughs> they don't let it in your sport. So you're sad and mad because we're allowed to do it. It's legal <laughs> for us to do it in our yeah. sport. And you can't do it to make yourself better. No, it's true. And and I used to, like, when I was in high school and stuff, I, I thought it was, like, the, you know, it didn't make any sense. I was like, you know, what's what's the point? Like, if everyone can do it, like, why just not do it and all? But I, I now that I've gotten more into lifting and I, you know, kind of understand how cool it is to squat 1,200 pounds, it, I think it has its place. Like, it's pretty it's pretty neat. Um, yeah. But, sure. again, nothing I'll ever, I'll ever do. Yeah. And I mean, you have those guys that are competing at the highest level that they possibly can for their body. And like you said, if they're trying to break records, like I'm going to talk about Larry Wheels here for a second. He flat out, he just made a video not too long ago. I think it was a week or two ago. He flat out said that he is on it. Yeah, no surprise there. <laughs> and he has said that he was on it. He used to be on it too early. He would start 10 weeks out from a show, get into it, get into it, get into it. And he'd be dead by the show oh, because interesting. it would take his body too much to do it. Now he has talked to his coach, he's talked to his doctors. They're like, this is probably the right amount of time for you to do it. This is when it should really affect you. On that day, when you, if you take it on this specific day and start it, your body's gonna be able to use it on this specific day when you have to. Hmm. And I think that's the cool part because you see these guys and they're like, oh, I, I'm on it, I'm on it. Or you got the guys that are on it and say that they're not. And I'm just like, if you're on it, own it. There's no reason, yeah, especially in this sport, there's no reason to hide it. And usually, you know, you can tell if someone's on it. So yeah. it's like, why not just be upfront about it? Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I agree with that. Especially in the – even if you look at a powerlifter, look at his physique. Like Larry Wheels, 300-plus pounds right now – or close to 300. I think he's 297-ish yep. area in between 297 310 for the record that he's trying to break. He doesn't look natural. No. I mean, he's probably what, like 6 or 8% body fat? Yeah. He's eight, like, or He's around there for sure. And he just looks completely shredded. Yeah. It's like, we know. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you tell us, you told us before that you've been on it. And the way his strength has gone up, like, yeah, you have those genetic freaks, but nobody is that genetically gifted. Yeah, that's absolutely I don't, I don't know many guys that are genetically gifted at that point at 17 to be able to deadlift over 700. Yeah, it's, it's few and far between, <laughs> for yeah. sure. For sure. It, it's like... Yeah, you have those guys that are lifting five, six hundred pounds, and then you have these guys that are either in full suits, wraps, yeah, fully yeah. equipped, the fully equipped guys that are lifting that amount of weight, and then you have the guys that are on it, and they're lifting above and beyond, and you're like, oh, I want to get there. Some of those guys, and I feel like some of the beginners are like, oh, I want to get to these guys that are top level, like Larry, I don't, I don't want to say any names because I don't want to throw anybody out there, yeah. <laughs> but like, other than Larry, I'm not going to throw any names because... I don't feel like starting anything right <laughs> yeah, now, but the beginners, I feel like look up to these guys and that's the problem with our media is a lot of these guys that sometimes not saying Larry is hiding it because he flat out told us right, yeah. many times, but you have those guys that aren't natty and they're like, oh, I'm natty, I'm natty, I'm natty, but you have to be like, I'm just speaking out because you have to be mindful because a lot of these top guys aren't thinking about all these guys below them. Mm -hmm. Like these guys who are equipped are like, oh, I can do this. Just oh, give yeah. me a little bit more time. Or these guys that aren't equipped are thinking, oh, I might be able to get there eventually. Or you got the beginners who are like, oh, I want to be them. Yeah. But unless you take the substances, you're not going to get there. And I think that that's, that's one important kind of point that you're, you're, you're getting at is like you shouldn't compare yourself really to other people in, the, in this sport because – Everyone's different genetically, you know, um, we all started at different times. So I think it's really important to focus on yourself and your own progress um, yeah. in, in that sense. I definitely like the comparison point because I know a lot of the time, like when I was growing up and I was getting into it, I hated my body. Mm. I will say this now. I feel like I, I never got fully tested, but I definitely had a form of body dysmorphia because the way I was bullied my entire life 
formed into that. And then when I started lifting, I was always the heavy kid. Yeah. It was 230 when I started. I know I've talked to you about this. Yeah. It was 230 when I started. I, and now I'm sitting in front of a mirror 20, almost every second I can. Well, that's what's so awesome about lifting is, exactly. is like, I mean, you, you're smiling, just talking about it, yeah. you know, is it, it's clearly like change your life for the better. Um, I think that's why, why I love it, love it so much. Yeah. And it's cool. Like I love being able to hear like different stories and that's kind of why I wanted to do this. I wanted people to hear different perspectives, different yeah. like stories. I mean, you got Jake, he started out a bodybuilder, got into powerlifting. Now he's going back to bodybuilding. I mean, you had David started out as a swimmer with working out to be better at swimming. Now he's a power lifter. Yeah. You started out kind of like the body basketball stuff for plyometrics, kind of went into a little bit of bodybuilding, but really are focusing on powerlifting. Yeah, absolutely. And same with Seamus. He went straight from basketball plyometrics, getting stronger for basketball. Then he was like, I really like this. I want to see where it goes. So I, he started to bulk, get to powerlifting. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of guys start out with that. Like it all, a lot of us lead it from sports. Because, yeah. I mean, I started lifting because of track, and then I just fell in love with it, and I started powerlifting about a year ago. It'll actually be a year on Tuesday. Oh, yeah. Dang. <laughs> no, I think, yeah. Especially because I've been cutting, I cut for four months. <laughs> cut for a third of my, a cut, or my career already, <laughs> but, you know, it's just Way cool. It because, like you said, even, even if you compare yourself, like, if you compare yourself... I think that's a whole nother ball game. When you start comparing yourself to other people, like, yeah, it's fun to be competitive. Like you and I, yeah. we compared our PRs, our maxes, whatever you want to call right. them. Yeah. And that's going to be fun because it's going to make us compete against each other. Because I'm going to hit these PRs and then you're going to hit your PRs. And I'm like, dang it, I want to be better than yeah. that. So I'm going to push myself that much harder to get there. And we're just going to pretty much and go that's, back and forth. That's a healthy, I guess, a healthy way of doing it. You know, I don't, I don't, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and there's also nothing wrong with having, you know, role models. Like you're talking about Larry Wheels. Don't obviously compare yourself or say, I'm going to be Larry Wheels. Because the reality of it for most of us is, is you're not. Mm -hmm. um, um, but saying, you know, I want to strive to be that. I think that there's nothing wrong with it. And, and for me, I, I guess one of those is, you know, my brother was always, you know, wick, wicked strong and, and, and jacked. And I think that that kind of inspired you know me to to want to be it too um yeah and so i think that the, the, having the role models is an important piece as yeah well. and i mean like what i started i had my cousin who was in the military and then he had a friend named chris god dang it i know way too many chris's <laughs> <laughs> but he chris was always the bigger guy like yeah. i would lift with these guys and i'd see chris put on like 8 185 for sets of 12 and i'm like i want to like this is who I'm going to look up to right now. This is who I'm starting to look up to my cousin. And then you will go online and you have what athlete X, Stan Efferdine, Mark Bell, yeah. the strong men guys, Larry wheels. There's so many big names now that are out there online that you're just like, I look up to these guys. These guys are so knowledgeable. Like mm -hmm. these who are, this is who I want to be. And it's not even that you look at their physique or you look at their strength level. Sometimes it's just what they say. Like, Absolutely. Larry, he says so many smart things. Yeah. Or funny things that are just like, I want to be like him. Same with Louie from Westside. He's got a lot of great quotes. You know, don't have $100 shoes in a 10 cent squat. Exactly. <laughs> Weak things break. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about Louie, honestly. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> but no, so I, we've been kind of rambling a little bit, but I, <laughs> I like it because it's kind of like that. It shows the relationship type thing. I mean, I've known you for what? five six months yeah i don't know september however long ago that was probably yeah so it's like you see it go from not knowing each other just asking for a spot here or there yeah and then you go now we're sitting here talking for half an hour to an hour <laughs> yeah it's true dude. about like our life and like what our progress has been no it lift, it lifting's a it's a cool way to to connect people for sure um yeah, you know, like I've, I've talked about, some of my best friends have, have come from come from it. So yeah. that's the thing. Like you said, you got your buddies Seth and Cade. Yep, yeah. from back home. Those are guys are obviously you said a bit stronger than you. Yeah. It's cool to be able to lift with the stronger guys. Absolutely, dude. And like, I'll see them do stuff that like you really don't see much. Maybe aside from like Chris or or, or Seamus on his best lift in in the. Uh, in the fit, you know, like it's, it's nothing for me to go to the gym at home with them and, and see Seth doing 315 for reps or, or see Cade, you know, pulling 405 for like 10 or 15. It's like, Jesus. it's, it's so cool to see that. Um, 
Yeah, and I think that that's 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 the important piece of it. Yeah, and I think that's another thing because I'm sure they might have like different body structures. You got everyone's going to be. Like I know some guys consider themselves well-rounded lifters, but everyone has that one lift that's like their best. Yeah, and absolutely. They're better at it than the other two. Like yeah. I know for me, my squat's pretty good. My deadlift is eh, but my bench. I find myself as a bench specialist because my bench is so much more technically sound than the other two. Yeah, yep. And I don't know what you're... I would say that's probably the case for me, too. I think my squats improved a lot. My deadlift's definitely my worst. Um, <laughs> but bench... Actually, it was Jake really, like, locked in my bench and, and taught me how to how to bench really well. Um, so I have to give him credit there. Yeah, I have to give Jake credit there, too. <laughs> he's, he's, he's good at that, for sure. <laughs> yeah, his, uh, his bench is pretty insane for his size. Yeah. Friggin' 5'5", five, five, and I think he hit it when he was 170. Friggin' a 3'10 bench. I'm like, bro, what? I know. He's, 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 a, he's a bit savage on the bench. Almost double body weight on bench. <laughs> his range of motion is pretty questionable. It's it. That's He's so good at the form. That's how he can pull yeah. it off. Yeah, for sure. Just messing with you, Jake. Don't worry. <laughs> I know you're probably going to listen to this. But no, it's just fun to have those guys that are bigger and stronger than you. Because, like, I've learned so much from my deadlift. I mean, even my deadlift. I will definitely give props to Jake for this. He broke my deadlift completely down. October. He pretty much told me to strip it down, 135. And we worked on sumo. I've been yeah. sumo deadlifting ever since. Yeah. That's that's what's so cool about us. Like like we talk about having those people in the gym who are who are able and willing um, and to help you out. It's yeah. pretty pretty cool. Most guys, especially if you see them in there and they're not, don't interrupt them mid set or right after a set. If you see that they're exhausted from a set, I will say Chris. He pulls six twenty five the other day. I'm pretty sure for eight. Don't quote me on that because I didn't really look at the bar, but I'm pretty sure that's yeah. What he said. I think he said that to me. It was either six or eight, but he pulled that. And then he's out of breath because, obviously, you're bracing for a long time. You're holding yeah. your breath for a while. Don't interrupt the recovery, please. That's <laughs> when you get those guys that are just, like, annoyed with you. Yeah. He looks ready to die. Maybe don't talk to him for yeah. a minute or two, you know? Like, if they're chilling at the water fountain or chilling with a group of guys, don't be afraid to ask. Like, like I brought, I walked up to Seamus one day, and I think I met Ben that exact way. Yeah. Or, like, Ben and I will talk on the stairs or on by the water or whatever. Or, like, after a set or something like that. Yeah. But definitely get those relationships, make those connections. I think those are two big points that we've talked about this entire time. Absolutely, yeah. But to go off of that, if you had a couple phrases, one phrase, however many you think and think of, what would you say to a beginner just starting out? To a beginner? Day one in the gym, what would you say to this kid? I mean, one of the one of the first phrases with me, I said it earlier, was was don't have hundred dollar shoes in a ten cent squat because I would always neglect legs when I was when I was. Th- That's just me. I know that's not the case for everyone. Um, you know, but I think not necessarily for beginners specific. Um, one of one of my favorite things people, I think Cade was the one who told it to me was, it's so simple, but I just I love it. Is you know a lot of guys talk about wa- wanting to have a bigger squat, squat more. You know, yep. a lot of guys want a bigger bench, bench more. It's so simple, but but I love it. You know, yeah. it's like just just bench more. Yeah, literally. I mean, you heard Jake a few weeks ago, or not a few weeks ago. It was earlier this week, but it feels like it's been so long. <laughs> <laughs> Almost spring break. Yeah, exactly. But no, you heard Jake. He said when he was benching, yeah, he tore his quad and couldn't really squat or deadlift or anything. Yeah. But he was benching three, four times a week. Yeah. I mean, when that's all you can do, or you got this guy, uh, Julius Maddox, the guy who just set the bench record at like 750. Jesus. With ease, mind you. Literally, <laughs> the guy could have pressed maybe 15 other pounds. That's but insane. he's also like 400 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, pressing double body weight is still pretty impressive. Oh, or yeah. Or near double body weight at that point. But he said on a video with Eddie Hall that I watched, he benches four days a week. Yeah. I and mean, that's what he does. It's clearly like... His lift, you know? Yeah. And then you got these guys like Dan. Uh, Daniel in the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here at the Dan's one of my good buddies. He, he's so knowledgeable. And I saw him the other day. You got these guys who are powerlifters. Some of these guys are not ready to go into a powerlifting meet and be able to squat, bench, deadlift. Absolutely, yeah. No, completely agree with that. I saw Dan squat, bench, deadlift two days ago. Yeah. All yeah. three in one day. <laughs> he'll, he'll do that too. He, he trains a little bit different than, than some people in the gym, but he's... He's really strong. He's, he's definitely got something figured out. I like it, though, because it's 
you don't see it very often. You don't see a lot of guys that will train one day a week where they have all three. Yeah. No, I mean, we we never do that, me and Seamus. That's just yeah. not, not how we program. I mean, I do too. Like, I'll, I have bench and deadlift tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I usually do, like, one or the other, but I don't do both. And yep. it's kind of funny because it's like, you don't see it. No, it's, and it is it is interesting when you do see it. And, and also seeing those guys succeed um, yeah. is pretty cool because it just shows that there's – there's more than one way to skin a cat, you know. You can you can see success in this in this sport in, in a multitude of ways. Exactly, and I think that's the cool part, especially with the programming. Like I run a version of a five three one. Yep. You and Seamus run a very. I like your schedule. I like the way Seamus has broken up your yeah. program. I he showed me it the other day after our interview podcast. Whatever you want, I'm not sure what to call these interviews. It feels like a podcast to me. Yeah, it feels like a podcast. I think I'm gonna start calling them podcasts just because. <laughs> I, I feel like it's a little bit better than an interview because, I mean, I asked the questions when we talked. Yeah, and, yeah, definitely conversation. But, like, you see these guys, and they're some of these guys make their own programs. Like, Jake, his program was from his trainer, but I think he's making his own now. Yeah. And then you have David, completely on his own, knows what he's doing, trains other guys. Yeah. Then you have me. I know what I'm – I I think I know what I'm talking about, <laughs> at least. Yeah. I mean, I made my own version of a 5-3-1. Yeah, there you go. And it seems to be working. My numbers have skyrocketed since my cut. Is it, it sounds like it's working. <laughs> and then I have my friend, you know Noah. I think you met him one time. Noah. I'm not sure I do. Well, he's the guy I always train. But <laughs> he, uh, oh, I think you met Seamus, not you. Yeah. But no, so. I'm sure I've seen him around. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. I think he's been in there a few times. But he... His numbers skyrocket with my program. And I mean, I put him on a 531, yep. but I made it my way. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you have Seamus, and he's making programs for got his training buddies, like you and Rob. But it's just cool because you have so many different styles. Yeah. And I love it. Yeah, no, and it's 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 awesome. And it's it's why you're able to learn so much going to the gym and just, just talking to people because everyone does a little bit differently. Yeah. But no, I think... Unless you have anything else you want to say, like any small points or anything, I'm sure I'll think of a couple of things right right when we right when we hang out. But, <laughs> right uh, when I call this out, yeah. But uh, no, I I think uh, I think we hit hit most of the points that I'd like to. So alrighty, yeah, really really enjoyed being on here. I appreciate you coming on. All right, guys. Well, this has been me with Athlete Culture. I'm here with Ben Lowe. I'll drop both of his Instagrams, his fitness and his main one, down on the description. Go ahead, give him a follow. Go follow athlete.culture47. You know where to find me. I'll see you guys later.